Hi, this is Jason here in Las Vegas, Nevada on January 16th, 2010. I've got my 9,000 gallon, 20 foot round above ground pool in my backyard. And I've been running and using my brand new Rude 104,000 BTU heat pump with heat and cool feature. This unit is working fantastic out here throughout the entire winter. I've been using it since November. And even when I've had daytime temperatures only at 46 to 48 degrees for a high, with a low getting down to 27 and 28, this heat pump ran throughout the daytime and was able to maintain my pool in the mid 80s. It's incredible how well it works for such a low price using just the electricity to extract the heat out of the air, the free heat, and put that heat into the water at a very low cost compared to using natural gas or propane or a uh, pure electric resistive heater. This unit, I want to show everybody what I've got hooked up here. I've got these boards set up. They're protecting a camera that I have which monitors my temperatures inside the house so I can watch them throughout the day and check on everything. These also protect my time clock I have set up here and um, you can see my camera over there and all my thermometers. Normally, obviously, you wouldn't have anything like this in your backyard. I just have all this so that I can show all of our uh, customers and friends exactly how well all of our heaters work that we test and use. I want to come over here and show everybody on the side. I have a temperature sensor mounted right here. This runs over to the thermometers. You'll see that in a second. This is measuring the air temperature being drawn into the evaporator coil, which is then the heat's taken out of it, and then the, what's left over is cold air shooting out of the top, as you can see by the ribbons I have tied on here. I also have a little another external thermometer hooked up here, just sitting here showing 28% humidity with about 62 degree air. So very dry conditions, and there's a lot of misconceptions about these kind of heat pumps working in the desert southwest and western United States that they don't work very well in dry climates. And that's actually a very big misconception. They work fantastic. They do work a little better, of course, if you have a lot of humidity because there's a little bit more heat that it can take out of the air when in that situation. You get a better heat transfer. But it is not a big difference. I usually have 10, 15, 20% humidity out here. And oh, compared to the times where we get a little bit of rain in the desert and my humidity goes up to 70 or 80%, there's not a real noticeable difference in how much heat this unit puts into my water. Um, it works fantastic, and the proof is in how well this, this pool is heated. I've got my solar blanket on it, of course. That's something you definitely want to do in the wintertime. Pool's nice and warm. Can't see any steam coming off it right now, but at night you sure can if you lift the blanket off. Got kind of a custom pipe setup going in here, a little bit different than a normal above-ground pool for my setup. And what's important to check out here are all the temperatures that I've got set up here. This is pretty neat. Now, sometimes on the video, this digital display on the heater will flash and rotate. It, on the actual heater itself, it's perfectly constant lit. It does not flash, rotate, or do anything weird. Sometimes the video picks that up, though. So what we got is we got the water temperature going in at 84.9 with my temperature sensor in the pool, coming out at 89.4 in the return line. So the heater is instantly adding 4.5 degrees of heat to the water pipes, which go in and out of the heater right over here. So you got 4.5 degrees of heat going into the water instantly as it's constantly rotating through the pool. And the air temperature going in at 61.7 and coming out at 49.3. So it's taking about 12 degrees, 12, 12 and a half degrees out of the air, putting four and a half in the water, which is actually a really good uh, achievement. That's working fantastic, especially considering it's only 61 degrees with such low humidity. Um, one thing that's really neat about this unit being that it has the nice digital display on it. You can come over here when you want to adjust the water temperature. And of course that's showing 85.3 right now, which is the current temperature of the water measured by a sensor inside the heat pump. If you want to adjust it, you just come hit the up arrow, 87, 88, 89. You can come back down, whatever you want to do to set it. And then, of course, because this is a heat and cool model, you can go into the set point menu right here and select heat and cool and go to the cooling mode and drop the pool. So say if somebody in the family likes the pool at 87 degrees in the wintertime, you can crank it up to 87 for them. And then if you want to take a swim in the afternoon and drop it a couple degrees, you can do something like that. The primary purpose of it, of course, is to keep the pool nice and cool in the summertime. Uh, in a lot of locations where it gets way too hot. Like my pool will get up into the upper 90s on its own with no solar blanket in the, in the summertime when it's 115 every day out here. Another thing I want to mention about this great heat pump is that it is AHRI certified. And that's an outside laboratory that independently verifies the results of this heat pump to be accurate and guaranteed accurate based on the numbers that the manufacturer puts out, which for this model is a 5.7 COP at 104,000 BTUs. That's a very high efficiency model compared to most of them on the market, and it's definitely working as, as well as it's recommended. Uh, in these conditions with 62 degree air, 
I'm getting about 85,000 BTUs based on my gallons per minute that I'm getting in my pump. Uh, going through the system, I'm getting about 85,000. Whereas if it got up into the upper 70s and 80s, I'd be getting the full 104,000 or more. Um, when it gets really cold down into the 40s and 30s at night, this unit still works really well because it has a power defrost built in, which is a special feature when you get a heat and cool model. What it does is the evaporator coil over here can start to build up with ice on it as you get into the, the cold nighttime temperatures in the 30s and 40s. And what this heater will do is it will automatically detect that it's getting really cold outside and for about three or four minutes it will, sh it will shut off for a second and it will defrost that ice off real quickly and then the unit continues to run and heat your pool back up. So it allows it to go in and out of this defrost cycle instead of just turning itself off and permanently stopping for the night like most heat pumps will do. Usually they'll go down to about 50 degrees and most brands will shut themselves off and they won't come back on until the next day when it's in the 50s again. This unit, I've had this going all the way out here to 29 degree air temperature going into it. And that matters a little bit based on your humidity and how much of a, um, how cold it is based on your, if you have high or low humidity. If you have really high humidity, it usually will shut off in the upper 30s on me and mid to upper 30s. If it's kind of a little drier, which typically it is when it's cold, it'll go all the way down into the 20s, at least in my situation. Now that's not guaranteed by the manufacturer to always go into the 20s where you live, but it can happen, it does happen. And I'm gonna to try to take a video of that next time it happens to post on our website to prove that it really does work. And there's a lot of misconceptions in the industry with pool builders, retailers, um, uh, any, anybody that works in the pool stores and, and uh, service department who sells heat pumps, gas heaters, propane, most of the people we run into and our customers out here in the desert southwest area, all over uh, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, California, they all tell you usually that heat pumps don't work out here. You don't want to get this. You want to buy a big, powerful gas heater. It's the only way to heat your pool in the wintertime. And they say it's just too cold to take enough heat out of the air for it to work properly. Well, this is proof of how well it actually works. It works fantastic. This is a 9,000-gallon pool. This unit, which is 104,000 BTUs, would work wonderful out here in these climates, even through the entire winter, on a pool that's up to 20, 25,000 gallons, if you especially put the blanket on it at night. Um, the nice thing to point out about this is I'm only using about 5.5 kilowatts of electricity. I pay about 12 cents a kilowatt out here. So I'm only around 65 to 70 cents an hour to run this heater. And on my size of pool with 60 degree weather, I can heat it up a degree in 45 minutes. So it's a pretty quick heat up time for a very low price I'm only spending, you know, $70 to $100 a month extra on my electric bill to keep this uh, pool in the mid-80s. And I go swimming every day. Get in there and vacuum it, clean it, enjoy it. My girlfriend comes out. We have a nice swim in the evening sometimes when she gets off work. And, I mean, it'll only be 45 degrees outside, but it's absolutely beautiful to get in the pool if it's a nice, calm night outside. So this unit really puts all the misconceptions uh, to sleep. When in you got to be careful when you're listening to people. If you're looking to buy something and you think gas is the only way you can do it, you can't. This, this works great. It will save you a lot of money. You have no carbon footprint with this. You're not burning propane or natural gas in your backyard, which is inefficient and expensive. This is very energy efficient, very green technology. It's been around for a long time, but it's becoming a lot more popular these days as people are trying to go green and do something better for the planet and environment. One thing I want to show you real quick, you got the ladder set up here. This heat pump is unique. The, this Rude brand actually uses a metal cabinet which, with, which is powder coated and protected instead of a lot of heat pumps which use a plastic or fiberglass cabinet which isn't that tough. Normally you don't need the heater to be excessively tough, but I want to show everybody, I'm going to climb up here, I'm 230 pounds, and I'm going to climb up here real quick and stand on the edge of the heater. Now obviously we don't want anybody to do this at home. We don't recommend this, but I'm doing this to show everybody how strong and heavy duty these heat pumps are. Most units, you would not want to do this at all. And on this unit, it is the toughest I have ever seen a heat pump be. Superior quality, excellent, quiet, very efficient, and works very well out here throughout the entire winter time. We appreciate you watching our videos and checking this out. And if there's anything we can do to help you guys uh, save a lot of money and uh, have a green technology item in your backyard instead of everything else that most people have, gas and propane, and waste their money on it, please contact us at PoolHeatPumps.com. My name is Jason, and uh, thank you for watching our videos. We appreciate it, and uh, stay tuned for more. As we're going to take some other really nice ones as we get a chance as the weather changes. We'll have some other pretty neat videos to take a look at. Have a great day.